Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. If everybody could please stand and join in the play. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are going to do a couple of things a little out of order this evening. Um, we are going to go to correspondence. There is none. Policies for first reading. There are none. And policies for second reading. There are none. That brings us to the first opportunity um, for comments from the public. Please remember that there is always a second opportunity at the end of the meeting as well. The Board of Education encourages public expression on school related matters. Public comments that deal with personnel matters and or discipline issues that reveal the identity of specific individuals, either directly or indirectly, will be prohibited. As stated in Whitney Point Central School, District Policy 3230, public complaints, questions of a specific nature should be directed to the appropriate office during school hours. The meeting chairperson has the right to limit and or extend any and all discussions. His or her decision will be final. Please state your name and residency before you begin and keep your comments brief so all members of the community may have an opportunity to speak and comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Is there anybody who would like to speak this evening? Stacy, do we have a second microphone or? That's all right. Okay. My name is Rosie Rowe. I live in Ongoma Road. Uh, if we're, we're having a difficult time hearing you ourselves. Um, so hang on and we'll get you a microphone. Okay. I come here tonight. It's not turned on, Shannon. I'm sorry, I shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> I come here tonight with a heavy heart, not to judge or condemn you. There is one far greater than I who will do that. Jesus told us that God made us all different and unique and that those differences are good. By teaching critical race theory, you are calling God a liar and condemning our children, but you are condemning yourselves much greater in the eyes of God. He is watching you. By teaching the deviations of sexuality to God's children, you are calling God a liar. The Bible says he made them male and female, and it was good. <clears throat> Please stop teaching our children that it is okay to sin against God. God commands us to obey his word and to love one another. You are telling our children that it's okay to disobey God's commands and that it's okay to hate one another. Hate and disobedience are the devil's work. God is watching and he sees the evil you are doing. I pray that you will open your eyes and heart to the evil you are teaching God's children and ours before it is too late for them and for you. Because God is watching and sees what you are doing and someday each and every one of you will have to answer to him for the evil you are allowing to be taught to his children. He will be the final judge of you, your souls, because he, you need to decide whether you want to spend eternity with God in heaven 
or with the devil in his fiery pit of hell. We are heading into the Christmas season, the time when God showed us how much he loves us by his gift of his precious son, Jesus. I implore you to show that same love to our children by teaching them they are all uniquely different and special. And that is a good thing. And God wants them to use those differences for good, not for evil. God sent his son out of love for us to save us from our sins. Christmas is the season of love. Let's teach that love to our children all year long. And God sent me here or I wouldn't be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Is there someone else? There's somebody in the back. Yeah. One in the back. Hi guys, I just wanted to let you guys know um, how much, um, oh, sorry, Melissa Peterson. I work for the school, I have two girls that go here um, and one's on the field hockey team. So we traveled this weekend and I was sitting next to um, parents of the other team on Saturday and they were making mention how they didn't see their administrators anywhere. And we looked over and we saw our superintendent. We looked over, we saw our athletic director Numerous games throughout the year, we've seen our principal show up. I just want to thank you guys for supporting our girls. It means so much to all of us that you guys are there to support them through everything they do. They did a fantastic job. Yes, they did. I don't think I need to use that. I think I can speak loud enough. <laughs> Um, my name is Mary Lou Prindle, and I'm from Glen Aubrey, New York, and I have a few questions here. Um, this is about going back to maybe the previous discussion I may have been trying to present somewhat. Who made the decision to apply for and receive the COVID relief grants? Was there any discussion on this? Could you please provide copies of all the documents and the communication pertaining to all previous, current, and future monies the school has and will be receiving from any and all those grants associated with COVID relief funding? Are you required to follow any and all the mandates but for at the federal, state, or local level to continue receiving the money. What would happen if you um, discontinued it following any of the mandates? Can you discontinue receiving the fund if you choose to discontinue to follow the mandates? Please provide any information distributed to the taxpayers regarding the COVID grant money. Seems to me everybody's left in the dark about this. And um, I just wanted to add too, um, what do we need this money for anyway? If you've already received it, why, what is it going to be specifically used for. Um, are we going to continue to support the narrative about what's going on, even though it's wrong? My other concern tonight has to do with the children. Who makes the final decision about the children with the mandates on getting the COVID vaccine? And we know it's going to be very soon down the road, we're going to who, who's going to specifically make that final decision and be held accountable for it. Because what these decisions, I believe we have to look more at the fact that is this going to 
really be a positive thing for the kids? You know, just to inform you, the FDA is funded by pharmaceuticals. Um, we need the freedom to choose. Parents of the Whitney Point school community are those who are in charge of any of the students that attend this whole district need to have the liberty to look after their kids and have the right to decide whether they get vaccines or they don't. And now I understand it's the five through 11 that will be mandated very soon. Um, Mrs. Prindle, yes. if you could finish your thought because your three minutes are up, but please finish Can I finish thought. it up later or am I, is if, this it? If you'd like to uh, finish it up at this um, second opportunity at the end of the meeting, you may. Okay, that way I don't have to rush it. <laughs> All right, thank you. And my students know I don't need that. Um, we do still so, need you to state your name and where you live. Uh, Linda Burkhart, my kids know me. I live in Lyle Ham. Personally, my whole life except my time going to college. Um, a retired teacher and coach for the school. And uh, I was sharing with Joanne before we started because um, I don't want to be perceived like I'm somebody that's just trying to give everybody a hard time. But every time that we try to get some positive results, nothing happens. So you have to, I feel like you have to become more and more firm in your commitment. And my commitment is to get this school to take a stand for the kids, the teachers and staff, and the parents in this district because the school has gotten into a position for reasons that we don't necessarily fully understand because we don't know who decided to go with this CARES money and how it's being spent. But I do know you have to follow all the rules that come down the pike, whether they make sense or follow the science or not. And I am here to tell you that there are people who will stand behind you if you take that stand for what is following the science, what is real truth, however you wanna look at it. So for instance, I shared with Joanne, I have COVID antibodies. I am not gonna give it to anybody. And in, the, in addition, and I know everybody likes to say, well, the CDC said, the CDC says, admits they have not documented transmission rates of COVID-19 among unvaccinated. Black and white. I already gave you 80 some mask studies. The masks are not effective, can even cause disease with lengthy wear. So here we are again, begging everybody to do some research. And I came in tonight with a thought that uh, the board of members emails are not on the school website. I can't even email you guys anything. I can send it to Ms. Sexton, she can get it to you, but um, is everybody like that? I don't know, I haven't taken the time to research that. I, I would just like to point out, Linda, and I won't take that off of your three minutes, but you do know how emails are assigned to the school district, correct? Well, if it's like mine was, yes. We all have emails from the school. Okay, well, I would know that, but they're not gonna know that. They were on the website at I one point. They were on the website. Yeah. I have looked three times. Well, I, told okay. you I looked three times and couldn't find it. Well, I apologize for that. That, okay. that shouldn't be. But maybe I'm looking in the wrong spot. But our emails are on there. And okay. they are easy to figure out because it's cwidall at emaslin at. Up to eight characters. No, I don't think that's. Is that, your full I name? I don't I think, think it's. my full name. Because you had an old email. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So, but but just you know, it, it's all it's. They oh, should they should be on there. If if they're not on there, it's an oversight because they were at one point. I they thought were they on. were too. I totally so, agree. But thank you. If if they're not on there, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay, I just couldn't. I could be looking in the wrong place. Stop hiding. Yes. All right. So I came in tonight with uh, the thought that. Uh, we need to share more information and maybe there's a time to set aside aside from this forum 
to do that, just because you really can't do much here. And so my three C's tonight were continuing education, critical thinking, and choice. Okay, and they're all things that we expect from our students as teachers. I'm going to start off with a statement from Congressional Representative Thomas Massey. This is what he says. Who could have foreseen that the response to the very lackluster performance of the vaccines could be to force people to take them? You have to know students here have been affected with their parents losing their jobs because of these mandates. Then to tell the people who took them to take more of them. For the CDC to change the definition of vaccination, which I've already stated previously, and for those who took them and still got infected, to blame those who didn't take them, which is, by the CDC's admission, untrue. Mrs. Burkhardt, if you could finish your um, thought, please. And yep, I'll finish and then pick it up at the end. Thank you. And then for the CEO of the company profiting most from the vaccines to call their critics criminals. I saw the video myself. The statement is a reflection of the science being twisted and turned to promote a systematic, authoritarian, tyrannical, and blatant removal of our constitutional rights. And I'll pick up with a Nuremberg code when I come back. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else? Sir? Good evening, board members and uh, administrators as well. I, uh, my name is Stephen Clock. I live in Lyle. Just so everyone's aware, I have a little history here at the school. I spent 20 years working in the bus garage. Um, I just, what I have to say doesn't seem that important now. I uh, went down to Binghamton to watch the marching band uh, perform in the Columbus Day Parade, and they did really well. Um, a couple things I saw was their music actually was better than the band that won. I mean, there, it, there's no question in my mind about it. The band in, that was in our class. Um, <coughs> the difference being between the two, the band that won had really nice uniforms and everybody looked the same. And then Whitney Point came marching down through and and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm sure everyone's doing the best with what they have to work with. My uh, goal here isn't to point fingers. I'm just telling you what I saw. The color guard marched ahead of the band and they were dressed in black and silver uniforms. And then the band followed behind with uh, maroon and white windbreakers and black pants, which I believe, I know we did, and I think every other student bought their own windbreaker and pants themselves to march in the parade. Um, and I think that probably led to the score they received, bluntly. Um, and then when the kids were loading the buses, it was difficult to tell Whitney Point from Johnson City. We had maroon and white windbreakers on and so do they. And that brings me to my other point I just want to mention that I've seen this, I don't know, a some sort of deterioration over the years. It's the Whitney Point Golden Eagles. Our school mascot is the Golden Eagle. Here's my yearbook for Exhibit A here, and it says Golden Eagle on it, okay? Then this sign has been tacked up in my barn ever since we've lived there. And it says Whitney Point Golden Eagles on it, okay? And I've seen white creeping into our uniforms and everything. School colors are maroon and gold. Golden Eagles. Our mascot, last I saw it, was a bald eagle. 
No one wants the word bald in their school mascot. We should have a golden eagle as our mascot. The other day I happened to be in the bus garage and there's an inflatable bald eagle in there. And that's not our mascot for the golden eagles. And I just think we should remember that and stick with maroon and gold as our colors. And I think the band would do better with some uniforms. That's all. Thank you very much. We have anybody else? Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Um, as I stated before, there will be a second opportunity at the end of the meeting. Um, at this point, before we continue to commendations, we are going to go back. We do ha have a need of an executive session. It is to discuss contractual personnel and confidential issues. Um, may I have a motion? Thank you, Chris and Eddie. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, we will be back as quickly as we can. Okay, we will come back to regular session at 6.45 p.m. And that brings us to commendations. Okay, to begin, um, we'd like to commend Ms. Murphy Hayes for organizing and for organizing and the many, many volunteers for assisting with the 57th Whitney Point Cross Country Invitational held on Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. And the Whitney Point Varsity Swim Team for their showing at the IAC Championship held on Saturday, October 23rd, 2021. Mr. Hartley and the high school student council and PTA, along with other student volunteers and the many parents and staff members for their participation in great outfits <laughs> um, for the trunk retreat held at the high school bus loop on Wednesday, October 27, 2021. The Carly Adams Primary School for the annual Halloween parade held on October 29th. Um, as always, uh, awesome and uh, joyous event, um, the Whitney Point Varsity field hockey team for winning the Section 4 Class C Championship held on Friday, October 29th, 2021. More to come on that. Um, the Whitney Point Varsity field hockey team for winning the New York State Class C Regional Championship held on Saturday, November 6, 2021. And <laughs> the Whitney Point Varsity field hockey team for winning the New York State Class C State Championship held on November 14th, 2021. And for today, being Broome County. Whitney Point Field Hockey Day. Thank you for uh, the county executive for coming out and proclaiming that today. Amazing team. Um, the Whitney Point Central School District in Whitney Point. Oh, video. Oh. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> it would definitely be much better health care to come to us. I'm old school. I, I need to have that professional face to face. I don't use my phones. <laughs> UHS, your care. Your way. Whitney Point Field Hockey Team are state champions. Once again, the Eagles earned their seventh state title. This title was a total team yesterday in Long Island. They know the team is back and we to celebrate. Very nice hearing this afternoon. Teachers, staff members, and Whitney Point students gathered outside in the hall to celebrate the team. Each member decked out with their medals in corsage, the colors, the senior Taylor Street. It's just unbelievable having to work so hard, you know, after really maybe we should replay that so we get the volume right on it. <laughs> there you go. Team or state champions, once again, the Eagles earned their seventh state title. Six titles since 2014 yesterday in Long Island. Today, though, the team is back in school to celebrate. During the ninth period this afternoon, teachers, staff members, and Whitney Point students gathered outside in the halls to celebrate the team. Each member decked out with their medals. The corsage, the school's colors, for senior Taylor Petrie and Kaylee Lynch. This state title is a great way to cap off their time as an Eagle. It's just unbelievable having to work so hard, you know, after really being crushed one year. Um, 
<clears throat> it feels great to have a comeback and to be on top again. Uh, it was amazing. We worked really hard all year for this. Um, our goals were to trust each other and to just work together and have fun, and I think we really did that. Both these two are headed to college. Their field hockey careers at one point might be over, but their college careers are just getting started. Or Taylor's planning on studying an agronomy, agronomy, and animal science, and Kaylee is studying architecture. So there was lots of coverage for that on, on a number of different stations. Um, and then, as I said, they were out there again today being honored by the county executive. Um, they're certainly an exceptional group of uh, young ladies. Um, and then the Whitney Point uh, Central School District and the Whitney Point um, Business Executive Zach Woodard and District Office Secretary Marsha Stahl for their work on the application to the Whitney Point Central School District on the behalf of the Whitney Point Central School District for to Utica National Insurance Group Safety Excellence Award. Whitney Point was awarded the highest award, Titanium, with honors, which also earned the district a $500 check. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lots of good news. Um, old business, we have none. That brings us to our consent agenda. Um, May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Thank you, Eddie. Second. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Um, on recommendation of the superintendent that the Board of Education of the Whitney Point Central School District create one position of a grants coordinator effective November 17, 2021. May I have a motion? Uh -huh. I have Tom and Chris. Any questions or comments? So um, in the district office, um, we've had some shifts, we had some retirements um, um, for different positions, and we, over the last number of years, um, have made a concerted effort to um, apply for many different grants to bring more opportunities into the district. Um, and very fortunately, we've been awarded many of these grants. The problem that we've run into um, particularly during the pandemic when we're so many swamped with so many other things is that each and every one of these grants has very specific criteria and timelines and rules and and things that um, we find ourselves barely managing um, and so in in really stead of of some other like district office type positions that we've um, had in the past, we really felt like a, a person who was tasked with managing all those specifics about all the different grants um, so that we make the most of the funds that we have and we make sure that we really use them well. That's why that position is being created. Um, it, it's a different need that we have at this point in time. And, you know, I think we mentioned earlier that grant funds can also, you know, also sort of pay for itself with, with, with um, for this position. This is um, some of the prepaid stuff, grant funds. Mm -hmm. really it's all grant funds, all that's grants. all. Those, I mean, that was kind of the beginning of the trying to get competitive grants. It's like, wow, look, there's this whole world of things that you can apply for. But um, so that that's part of it. Um, and but then we have gotten some um, school to uh, farm to school grants and um, architecture uh, uh, other options that have come up that we are able to to like have different things in the tra greenhouse and all of these things but like and you probably know if you've had any work with grants it's like every single one has very specific things that have to be done and timelines and funds have to be used in this way and that way and it's just um we want to make sure we're maximizing the funds that just really having an impact on student learning is this position going to be full time doing it? It's going to be full time. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Approve the appointment of Nicole Langton, term substitute elementary teacher for the 2021 to 2022 school year, effective November 17, 2021. May I have a motion? Thank you, Chris. Second. 
Thank you, Eddie. Any questions or comments? Um, this is for uh, Rachel Phillips, uh, the Raptors, and, and Nicole is here. There she is. She's doing a great <laughs> job, and we're so thankful mm -hmm. that she's uh, working with us this year. Thank you, Nicole. Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Congratulations. Um, approve the appointment of Rachel D'Amico from part-time teacher's aid to full-time teacher's aid, effective November 17th, 2021. They have a motion. Thank you, Tom. And a second. Thank you, Chris. Any questions or comments? Uh, this is uh, uh, the position that was uh, vacated by um, Tony Topes. You guys able to hear that? Vacated by Tony Topes. Tony Topes. Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Um, approve the appointment of Kelly Kuhlman, full-time teacher's aide, effective November 17th, 2021. May I have a motion, please? Oh. Thank you, Eddie. Okay. And thank you, Chris. This is a new position for a student in one to one need. So it's a new position for um, the student with a one-to-one -one need. Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Um, approve the appointment of Becky Wilcox, full-time teacher's aide, effective November 17, 2021. May I have a motion? Thank you, Chris. And a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. And this is a position that is also new for a one on one in TRA. Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Approve the appointment of Jessica Cafferty, part time teacher's aide, effective November 17, 2021. We have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Tom. And a second? Second. Thank you, Chris. And this is um, to fill a position that uh, Rachel Zico moved out of. Okay. Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Approve the appointment of Scott McIntyre, maintenance mechanic, effective November 17, 2021. May I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eddie. And a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. And this is this was um, held by Michelle Scott. Okay. And I know that Scott is here as well. Welcome, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? I am going to miss you, Scott. Approve the appointment of Michael Pelzel Poklampa, head groundskeeper, effective November 1st, 2021. May I have a motion? Thank you, Eddie. Second. Thank you, Chris. And this is a position that was uh, held by Mr. Okay. No, uh, new position. No, this is, no, this oh, is the new position, yeah. right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the okay. Right. We created yeah. it at the last board meeting. Okay. Yep. I didn't know that. I should stop reading this on there. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? <laughs> Approve the appointment of Lance Loudy, maintenance A head cleaner, effective November 1st, 2021. You have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Tom. A second? Second. Thank you, Eddie. And this is this is a position that just came from the partnerships. Okay. Hmm? Is he? Yes. Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any questions from the board? How'd you do on your Fisher trapping? Good morning. <laughs> 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Congratulations. Yeah. Um, approve the appointment of Emily Martin, cleaner, effective November 17, 2021. I have a motion. Vote. Thank you, Chris. And a second? Second. Thank you, Eddie. And um, position that is was vacated by Tim Martin. She worked over the summer, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? We're going to move to the agenda now. Um, approve the four year probationary appointment of Leslie Horsline, special education teacher in the special education teacher tenure area, effective November 29th, 2021. Probationary period of November 29th, 2021 through November 29th, 2025 is tentative and conditional only, except the extent required by the applicable provisions of Section 3012 of the Education Law. In order to be granted tenure, the teacher must receive composite or overall annual performance. Oh, it's a three year? Okay. Excuse me, it's being changed to a three year probationary period. Um, receive composite or overall annual performance review ratings pursuant to Education Law Section 3012-D of either effective or highly effective for the required number of years. And if the teacher receives an ineffective composite or overall rating in the final year of the probationary period, the teacher shall not be eligible for tenure at that time. I have a motion. Thank you, Chris. And a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. Is Leslie here? She's on Zoom. She's on Zoom. Welcome, Leslie. Do we have any questions from the board? Building, she be so she is going to be taking the position. Um, we had a position uh, in the high school um, specialized in adult teacher position, and um, Amanda Dunham is shifting into that position. So we have a position that Amanda uh, had, which is cross buildings with um, students who have some very individualized needs. And so Leslie is going to be taking it over, and she has a background in working with students. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Congratulations, Leslie. Um, approve the appointment of Denise Yauch, full time teacher's aide, effective November 17, 2021. May I have a motion? Sure. Thank you, Eddie. And a second? Second. I got Tom. Any so Denise uh, yeah, we had a number of shifts and positions as we've seen from last time to full time apply for other openings. So Denise um, has been working in that capacity um, and is now officially the full time. Okay. Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Approve the appointment of Bruce Anstey, bus driver, effective November 17, 2021. May I have a motion? I move. And a second? Second. Okay. Any? Any questions or comments? I guess we can't ever get too many um, right. bus drivers, so. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Approve the following coaching recommendations for the 2021 to 2022 school year. Boys wrestling, modified, Jesse Hartley, unpaid coach, Richard Ballard. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Tom. And a second? Second. Thank you, Chris. Any questions or comments? Just always appreciate the unpaid uh, coaches that do a lot and He's been around a long time, so yeah. we really appreciate it. <laughs> he has a lot of experience yeah. to impart. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? 
um, approve Leah Humphreys to attend the Whitney Point School District for the 2021 to 2022 school year and that tuition be waived. I have a motion. Second. Okay, I have Eddie and Chris. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Approve the memorandum of agreement between the superintendent of schools and the custodians association effective November 1st, 2021. Any motion? Yeah. Thank you, Eddie. And a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Refunding resolution. Summary refunding bond resolution of the Whitney Point Central School District, counties of Rome, Shenango, Portland, and Tioga, State of New York, adopted November 16, 2021, authorizing the refunding of all or a portion of certain outstanding serial bonds of said school district, stating the plan of refunding authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $3,250,000 refunding serial bonds of the school district and making certain other determinations all relative thereto. May have a motion. Thank you, Chris. The second. Thank you, Tom. Zach, do you have anything you wanted to say about that one? Yeah, I mean the district works with a lot of different uh, financial consultants. One of them is uh, fiscal advisors out of Syracuse. Um, they're always checking like the current market rates. We're doing our debt, and they found an opportunity where we could refund, which is basically like refinance your mortgage. We're refinancing some of the school debt. And uh, through that, we'll net about seventy-seven thousand dollars in savings. So, I could move all around. Any questions from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Except the anonymous donation of one thousand dollars for books and materials for the Carl E. Adams Primary School. Do you have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Chris. And a second. Second. Thank you, Tom. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Yes, thank Whoever you. it is. It's very nice. I know that they will be well used. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? <clears throat> Accept the donation of $37,676.72, the life insurance payment from Virginia Hills Estate. Do we have a motion? Okay. Thank you, Eddie. And a second? Second. Thank you, Chris. Any questions or comments? So this one really came out of the blue and uh, obviously uh, very appreciative, but I was approached about a month ago uh, from a life insurance um, uh, and agent uh, out of somewhere in the Midwest try and track down the beneficiary uh, to Virginia Hills Estate. And in her will, uh, she left her life insurance money um, to two organizations, and we were one of them. Uh, a lot of hoops to, to go through, but we were able to, to do everything we needed, and we received that check last week. Um, and again, I mean, for people that don't know Virginia Hill, uh, she basically has dedicated this district for over 50 years. So again, it was kind of amazing for anyone that knew her to know and they weren't even that surprised they said you know what that makes sense that's something she would have done so um you'll see another resolution coming up to do something good with that money um but again i think it's a it's a good story all around i knew virginia quite well mm -hmm. having worked here for a few years uh what a woman just what a woman never had a driver's license always drove to work one cent or somebody else but you talk about a sweet lady. You knew her job, and I just can't, I think, very highly of her always did. And what a woman, what a woman. This was her first job at 18, and she stayed here all her life. That's pretty incredible. Incredible. And she's still making an impact after her life. That's right. That's and will continue to do so. Yep. Yep. Wonderful. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? And approve the establishment of the Virginia Hill Scholarship Account. May I have a motion? 
I look forward to seeing um, how this at the graduation the first time that we award the scholarship. Yeah, so there incredible. was really no rules or guidance on how it would be dispersed, right. but we're going to leave it up to the high school uh, guidance committee and the principal and figure out you know, how they want to do it. But I mean, we're open to ideas, and I think we kind of know what Virginia's body of work was, so I we'll think we'll find some good uses for those funds in the future. Excellent. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Approve the unit cost methodology proposal for Broom Tioga Bosi services for 2022 to 2023. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Tom. And a second? Thank you, Chris. Any comments or questions? I still appreciate, Tom, that you pushed them and they, they put the changes in red for us so we know what the changes are. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Approve the substitute rate of pay schedule effective November 29th, 2021. Age substitutes, minimum hourly wage as per New York State law. Daily non-certified teacher substitute, $90 per day for seven hours. Daily certified teacher substitutes, $120 a day for seven hours. Long-term certified teacher substitute, $165 per day for seven and a half hours. Um, and that will need the approval of the superintendent. LPN substitutes, $1,750 an hour. Um, up to 89 days in the same assignment, no retroactive pay for previous daily work, no benefits. Um, term certified teacher substitute, salary and benefits per teachers association contact, contract, finite period of time equal to a semester or more in duration, no retroactive pay for previous daily or long term work. Substitute teachers working a half day, half the hours of a full day substitute will receive half the pay rate for the appropriate substitute category. May I have a motion? Thank you, Chris. And a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. Any questions or comments? I have a question. Well, I'm just going to say that we, um, you know, are looking to attract. We've always been able to you know, have a pretty steady group of um, substitutes who've worked in the district because they've worked here in the past or they just like working in our district. But as everybody knows, um, it's very competitive out there to find workers. And um, now more than ever, it's essential to have substitutes here working in the district. And with the rise in the minimum wage, it's going to replace all pay, um, our pay expectations. So we're hoping that we're able to um, increase the work here. Yeah, so I have a quick question. Well, first of all, um, we needed to do it. I mean, I'm getting emails daily at the college. Do you have any students that can sub? I mean, we even have changed our um, student teaching contract with our school so that our student teachers can actually substitute teach for the teachers they're with because we know the districts are in pain right now. Um, but uh, I do have a question on the certified uh, teacher substitute. Now, is that the New York State certification that a student can get? Is it that what you're that means classifying a teacher, there? It means a certified teacher. So if you have like a retired teacher, they come in there, a certified teacher. We have, so like if you, you're actually a certified teacher. Okay. Not so like they're not to be certified as a substitute. I see what you're saying. So um, I guess, is there a category or um, for the certified, is it certified substitute teacher? What's the other? Um, we have not ever had, so this is, this is just, Pretty much the language from what was already okay. Um, and usually in our New York, we have that, and we just up the rates. But no, we've not ever done, we've not had not ever found anybody who's had that certification. Um, but if it becomes you know more prevalent, then that would certainly be something we would consider. If somebody has gone through that certification process. Yeah, because we are seeing more students do that before they get their teacher certification to be able to get a little better pay. So maybe it's something we can look up, yeah, look sure. at, or think about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? No. 
just a comment. I know I've mentioned in the past, and I'm glad to see that uh, the rates going up so that we can get some more better qualified subs. Or just more subs. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? That brings us to superintendent updates. I'm just the, I mean, it seems now like a long time ago, but we, um, since our last board meeting, we did um, have an incident that did prove to be what's scary for people in our community. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of brief comments about school safety. Uh, we, as a district, as all school districts, um, we have safety plans and protocols in place in all of our buildings. Um, during that episode, and what happened was there was a threat online um, that sort of spread all over the country, and then it got reposted and people put like different school districts on it, and then it it found its way to Whitney Point that somebody posted Whitney Point and then a, a picture of that um, threat here in school. Um, we were assured by the, the state police that the, you know, they had thoroughly investigated that this was something that was spreading on the internet, um, but it's, as things do, spread very quickly on social media and, as you might expect, was very scary for families and people were unsure about sending their children to school. We worked very closely with law enforcement and so we thank them very much. Um, to make sure that it, it definitely was not a threat. But during that time, there were a lot of questions raised about, well, what does the school have in place? And we don't get to see the plans and we don't know that you know what you're doing if you have an emergency. And so, um, and just very briefly, I mean, while whenever something happens, I mean, we always look at our plans and update our plans, but whenever there's some kind of incident or it brings something to the forefront of our attention, it makes us realize, you know what, let's, let's, let's spend some time revisiting this. Let's make sure that the practices and the procedures that we have in place are up to up to date and they are they do consider the, the you know the new kinds of threats that might be out there so that is something that we are going to do but we just want to make sure that people know that we do do that training that we do uh you know follow guidance and have safety plans in place the problem is that they can't be public so our district safety plan is public but that's pretty, that's just like a skeleton of a plan because we can't share what our safety procedures are out in the public because then that would compromise our safety. So I know that's it's unsettling for families to say, well, I don't know what your plan is. So that, that makes me very uncomfortable. I, I just briefly wanted to share that that's the rationale for that, um, that we can't, you know, we just can't tell you that we would do a, B, and C if this happened, because then somebody who had malintent would know that also. Um, but uh, there obviously is nothing more important than the safety of the 1,400 students that are here every day in our school. Um, it is something that we're going to take a, a new look at because see, the world does change and, you know, there could potentially be different kinds of threats than we've considered. So um, we uh, always look at it as a priority, but we're going to take a little a new um, dive to make sure that we are, um, you know, auditing our practices regularly and making sure that we're seeking advice from experts to make to make sure that that we are up to speed on everything that we need to do to make sure that everybody's safe and secure here. I do ask that, you know, when these things and hopefully this won't happen again. That if you hear somebody talking about it, we are definitely working with law enforcement and making sure that we're taking our lead from them. Um, and they sometimes take a little time to let us know that, yes, we're sure you're, it's okay. And, um, but uh, we, you know, definitely consult with them and they are very, very helpful and responsive to the schools. So thank you. That brings us to our second opportunities for comments from the public. The Board of Education encourages public expression on school related matters, public comments that deal with personnel matters and or discipline issues that reveal the identity of specific individuals either directly or indirectly will be prohibited. As stated in Whitney Point Central School District Policy 3230, public complaints, questions of a specific nature should be directed to the appropriate office during school hours. The meeting chairperson has the right to limit and or extend any and all discussions. His or her decision will be final. 
Please state your name and residency before you begin and keep your comments brief so all members of the community may have an opportunity to speak. And comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Jennifer, I ask you to. Thank you. Um, is there anybody who would like to speak first? Mrs. Head. Not my daughter. Huh? <laughs> I don't think he could. <laughs> So you say my name and where I live. Yeah, Jessica Head, and I live in Lyle, and I've been a teacher here for 24 years. And I wasn't going to speak; I usually don't. But on your last comment um, about the safety, I've never not felt safe in this district, and I've been here for a long time. Um, so when things ever come up like that, I voice my concern to whoever. And when I get the "We're good, we're okay, we got it." That's what I tell my kids. That's what I tell the community. We're good, we got it. I wouldn't be here for 24 years and continuing to teach every single day with my littles in the CEA if I did feel safe. So thank you. And I know that this comes to you guys and it's heavy and I cry a lot. Is Dan here? Yeah, I still cry, Dan. Um, <laughs> but um, I just wanna say thank you because I've never not felt safe. You tell me you got it under control and we're safe. My kids and I pack up and we go to school. So thank you. That's it. Next. If somebody can't hear me, just let me know. Do you mind using it? It's easier for the people that are on Zoom to hear you. Okay. Thank you. No, I guess I got it under control. I might have to have hold it because I might do it. Well, that's why I was wondering. Oh, well, the rep, first of all, I'll just finish up with this part. Um, thanks. Um, my last part here that I wanted to communicate was. Um, who makes the final decision, the choice for our, the children of the Whitney Point School District? And of course, this is in reference going back to the vaccine. Um, and I think I already previously mentioned that the FDA is funding by pharmaceuticals. Um, I don't know how many people here have ever have read Linda's studies about different things that she has passed out in previous board meetings, but that was very informational. Um, I'd like to mention about Dr. Robert Malone, who is a well-known virologist in, uh, in now, he discovered the mRNA technology used in the vaccine field. This is what he did last month spoke at the International COVID Summer about the corruption in the pharmaceutical industry, the risks associated with the mRNA vaccine. This is the first time in history the world's population has been used for mass clinical testing of in an experimental vaccine. This is a violation of the Nuremberg Code. Uh, Dr. Malone, he warned that this technology carries risks of cardiac inflammation and autoimmune reaction, particularly in the young. And he spoke very clearly when I was listening to this, the children, there are gonna be children who will die. And how many children who will die? How long does it, what is it gonna take? To wake up and wreck whether it be across, you know, it's uh, pervasive all across the world or wherever. This is something that will be on your conscience of people who are not seeking the truth and finding out the exact what's in this and why is this being forced upon the community children. Yeah, put that just a second. I just got to put the thing here. So <clears throat> here's another little point. I have heard that. Um, when I ask about certain things, I've heard we have to follow state guidelines for the Department of Health. That is not an excuse for 
any of the board members to roll over and do nothing. Uh, you can still use your voices to question or to write letters to the state ed department with what's best for our district and our children. Not questioning or not relaying what community members want is not serving the children in our district. Mrs. Prindle, I yeah. do need you to finish your thought. Please. Okay, I got one, two sentences there. Okay. okay. I'm not asking you to break the law, but as a Whitney Point resident, I, um, it's not okay to use school facilities to administer an experimental vaccine on the children of this district. So where does accountability fall when a child dies or has an adverse reaction on the school property? And uh, you don't need to support the propaganda that's sent by encouraging, by the school, encouraging this vaccine. Health choices are between the doctor and patient. Thank you very much. I appreciate you listening to me and my information. Thank you. Are you up next, Mrs. Burkhart? Anybody else? <laughs> I don't see anybody waving or jumping up and down back there. Are we jumping up and down? So just a moment of levity, if I may. There was one time when I was a little afraid, and that's when a bull got loose. I <laughs> chased my class up the hill twice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> once from that way, and then, and here's the funniest part. I had a student who, like, this is the top of the line kid. Just love these kids. She's she's standing there raising her hand like she has a question. <laughs> In a class of the sport, she's currently on a Division One scholarship for. And I finally go, what? And she goes, there's that bull again. <laughs> so off we went. But anyway, because um, everything's been kind of kept. So anyway. All right. Um, can we interact at all? Because I just want to know if you've ever looked at the Nuremberg Code. Anybody over here ever looked at the Nuremberg Code? Get homework with you. Um, I, I think there are things that need to be stressed about the Nuremberg Code. Um, revisiting the whole idea of choice and people making their own health decisions. So I'm just going to highlight there are 10 tenets, so to speak, of the Nuremberg Code. But generally speaking, um, the standards that physicians have to conform to in carrying out experiments on human subjects um, is accepted worldwide through the Nuremberg Code. And it was, of course, a result of what happened during World War II. And it established an ethical medical behavior um, for scientists, doctors, um, anybody looking to advance any kind of medicine, experimentation, whatever. And the, the big thing I think that people are questioning is that it very clearly states voluntary informed consent of the human subject. That is why they have to have so many animal studies as part of the process for any new drugs or vaccines or anything along the way, which typically take 10 to 20 years. The principle of voluntary informed consent protects the right of the individual to control their own body. It also recognizes that the risk must be weighed against the expected benefit. And so much hinges on the vaccine. I know there's no mandate now, but it's going to come. It's coming to other parts of our country and our state. You have to know it's coming. And that unnecessary pain and suffering must be avoided. So who looks at Bayer's? Who knows what Bayer's is? Leah, you know what Bayer's is? <laughs> Look it up. Okay. It's the, um, the, basically it's the government site that registers adverse effects to vaccines. And you can very easily find the U.S. data. This is from November 5th, as well as the worldwide data. And I think that you might be shocked to know that worldwide, this is worldwide. From December of 1990s, we're talking 31 years, 
there were 849,110 adverse reactions. Since December of 20, we're talking probably about 11 months, the world has surpassed that number in 11 months to 875,653. 800, 800, so immediately, we know it doesn't work, people are getting sick, and does the risk of pain and suffering really validate any forthcoming mandates or any mandates that some of our students' parents are currently um, have had placed on that. This is Burkhart. I do need you to finish up your thought, please. So I guess I really want to encourage everybody to look up the Nuremberg Code, take a look at the VAERS numbers, and Harvard did a study not long ago that they estimate that as little as 1% of adverse effects are even reported. <coughs> so it's a minimum number <coughs> on that document. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody else? Okay. Um, we will then move to Board of Education comments. Thank you. Thank you. I made comment a couple of board meetings ago about the criticalness of cleanliness and sanitization in the buildings, especially at this time with the COVID pandemic. I asked for some help because I'm not necessarily good at putting words together. So this is what's presented to me, and I'll tell you by whom after. Goes this way. Frontline workers, the employees within essential industries that must physically show up to do their jobs. Before the pandemic, frontline workers were unknown, overlooked, and undervalued. Despite this, throughout the duration of the pandemic, they have valiantly reported to work, demonstrating courage, resilience, and commitment to service above self. In this district, I think of the custodial staff, teachers' aides, cafeteria workers, all who risked their personal health to ensure the daily operations were seamless, that student well-being was prioritized, and that we as a district could achieve our mission. They took on additional cleaning duties and served hundreds of bag lunches every day. It is simple. Our district would have and is unable to operate without them. So now I urge you all to consider if we are supporting and compensating our frontline, I fear that if we don't have an honest conversation and act to demonstrate that we value their work, that absenteeism will become increasingly widespread, our district will be forced to confront what is being referred to as the great resignation. And our ability to serve students will be fundamentally compromised. Written by one of our students recently graduated from here, my grandson, Evan Maslow, because he can put words together. He does it for other people that are seeking peace. Well, I know that this area for a long time in our society has managed those people for a long time. And if we don't value them, at this point in time, if cleanliness and sanitization and things aren't important enough, we've got something we need to act on. I'm talking to us board members, but we also need the support of the community. Thank you. Thank you. you Sorry, three of us. <laughs> so, First of all, thank you, Eddie. Um, and I want to say thank you, Jessica. Um, I feel very safe when I come to the school. Um, when I was a PDS coordinator for City Cortland, I remember causing a lockdown. I remember Mary Herbert was a superintendent and Joanne Knapp was the principal. And I had dropped off iPads for the school to borrow at the back door. And they didn't know who I was, but they figured out by the video that looks like Chris Whittle. 
Yeah, but I caused the lockdown. <laughs> so there's a little bit of lightheartedness too. So, but, um, and my grandson that morning, um, who lives with me now, goes to school here at Winnie Point, um, knew what had happened. And I said, if we got the message, you're safe, you're safe. He goes, I'm going to school, Grandma. I haven't missed a day yet, and I'm not going to miss a day now. So I think that's what's real important. And I thank you for all that you're doing. Um, so I just want to say that. And I do know what the Nuremberg Act is. I actually have to be certified for it every three years. Um, I know what all those things are that you're talking about. I thank you, Mrs. Prindle, Mrs. Burkhart, and I appreciate it very much what you have to say. And I know that sometimes we look like rocks here, um, but we are humans and <laughs> we do voice our opinions. We can't always say what we do, but I just want you to know that we are human and we do voice our opinions to the people that we need to. Um, so I just want to say that and then Thank you. Yes, we need band uniforms. Um, and I think they already know that. And I do agree. It's golden eagles, not bald and eels. There's a difference. <laughs> so I want to thank everyone tonight and all of our students in the back, too. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to kind of piggyback on the safety thing as well. I, I thank you for everybody mentioning it. I had an occasion to be in my workplace where we had a speaker come in about workplace safety and I was shocked. This person is an officer in this area has worked in SWAT and Whitney Point School District was brought up during our time and he mentioned that, that he was impressed with this what they had in place here. And where I worked, there were about six or seven of us that were in the district. He didn't know that he just brought it up. So. This was totally outside. This was a person that knows that has also worked with the district to help them on their plan. He knows what's behind the scenes. I was very impressed. Um, I was anyway, but I was even more impressed that it just came up out of the blue. So if anybody's worried, yes, things could happen, but boy, we're in good hands. And I really appreciate that. Um, also, Eddie um, mentioned about the, the workers. I mentioned it before. I know everybody's doing above and beyond. They're doing a lot of extra work. There's a lot that's been asked of them. Um, I have done a lot of those jobs. I'm married to people that do these jobs. Um, I appreciate it very much. And I just want to say to the district, everybody, everybody that's involved here, thank you for making this so that we are here doing the things that need to be done. I know it's very difficult, but I can't thank you enough for all that everybody in the district does. I mean, students, everybody, for doing what they need to do to make this work. Thank you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yep. So he. Uh, yeah. Scroll way on the Sorry. Uh, so this is from our other board member, um, Jeanette Griffith. She stated she's glad to see that there's a new bus driver was hired. She was so disappointed that the kids at the TRA were chosen to attend the STEAM program at these at BOCES, but couldn't participate due to a lack of driver. Okay. Alrighty. Um, that does. Oh. Have it when you're done with it to turn it off. Okay, um, that brings us to the end of our meeting. I just want to mention to the students that are back there that any one of us can sign your sheet. Please make sure it is filled out. We will not sign a blank sheet for you. Um, we are going to adjourn the meeting um, at 7.37. Um, may I have a motion? So Thank you, Chris. And a second. Second. Thank you, Tom. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstained? And thank you one and all for attending this evening. We appreciate it.